Shalom. Our Torah portion for this week is Tol Dot, and it, uh, in the main, uh, concerns uh, the, the birth and the early uh, lives of Isaac's uh, twin sons, Jacob and Esau. And as the story unfolds, we see that this was a very troubled relationship, a relationship full of betrayals and lies and deceptions. I would like to talk to you today about Isaac, uh, Jacob and Esau's father. There were three patri patriarchs, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and uh, Isaac is the one we know the least about. He's, uh, he is the one who stays at home. He's not an adventurer in any uh, in any sense of the word, like his father Abraham who set out uh, to a land, an undisclosed place that God would show him. Uh, he's not like his son Jacob who would go back to Mesopotamia and to find himself a wife. Uh, we know very little about him he, except that he seems to be a rather passive man. Uh, he doesn't break new ground in our religious tradition. He uh, stays in the land of Israel. Uh, we see that when he was young, his, his father was commanded by God to take him up to uh, Mount Moriah and to sacrifice him there. Um, we read that story on uh, Rosh Hashanah morning. And uh, we, according to our tradition, Isaac wasn't a child when this happened. He was a man of 37 years old. And yet he just passiv passively goes up with his father to a place where his own demise could very well have taken place. We know, fortunately, God tells Abraham at the end not to sacrifice Isaac. But we see that Isaac is a very passive person. Um, he uh, is controlled by his mother and his father. He's not even allowed to choose his own wife. Uh, his son uh, Jacob will go back to Mesopotamia to find uh, uh, a wife for himself. Uh, we see that uh, Isaac's life is very much controlled by his wife, uh, later on uh, Rebecca, and uh, even by his sons uh, uh, Esau and Jacob. And yet, there is a passage in this Torah portion that speaks of a quality uh, that Isaac had uh, that we can learn a great deal from. In chapter 26, verse 18, we read the following concerning Isaac. Isaac then turn, turned to digging anew the water wells they had dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham's death. And he gave them the same names as his father had given them. And when Isaac's servants dug in the wadi, they discovered there a well of living waters. Isaac doesn't dig new wells. He simply goes back to the wells that his father has dug. He cleans them out. They had been filled in by the enemies of the Jewish people. Um, he digs them out and he gives them, he assigns them the very same names as his father had. And in the process of doing so, he discovers Mayim Chayim, living waters. I believe that this is a metaphor. What he had done, in my estimation, is to go back to the tradition that his father had established. He didn't, he didn't innovate uh, uh, any new traditions, didn't introduce any new traditions, because uh, the old tradi traditions were being lost. He went back, reacquainted himself with uh, the wisdom of his father. And in doing so, what does he discover? Living waters. And from those living waters, from the living waters of tradition, his son Jacob 
uh, the patriarch uh, in the next generation uh, was nourished and inspired to innovate, to, uh, to find new meanings uh, uh, in, in the Jewish tradition. It seems to me that there are some, there are some generations that must be innovative. They must be the adventurers. They must be the ones who go out and, and um, experiment. And there are generations uh, that gather themselves into the tradition to rediscover ancient wisdom. When we stray too far from our traditional roots, uh, we have no basis upon which to make uh, our innovations, our reforms, uh, in Judaism. And so uh, I believe that Isaac is representative perhaps of the current generation of reformed Jews who are getting much more interested in Jewish tradition, in the, in the old traditions. That's not to say that they will not innovate and that they will not interpret, give new applications and new interpretations of the, of the tradition. It's just that they are rooting themselves in the marvelous, marvelous texts and wonderful traditions of our people. Shabbat Shalom.